The police is your friend, they say. And this brings me to my advocacy. Inspector General of Police, Adamu, what legacy? And this has been inspired by the rather unfortunate statement attributed to Nigeria's Inspector General of Police, Adamu Mohammed, over the weekend, where he stated categorically that he will not tolerate a peaceful protest anymore. Coming from an IGP who's retiring in February next year, that statement is not only arrogant, but a negation of provisions of Section 40 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which guarantees rights to peaceful assembly and association. It is enshrined in Chapter 4 of the Constitution under fundamental rights. In the crisis of information management that Nigeria has witnessed in recent times, this tops the list of statements a leader should never make. This advocacy will not be confrontational nor abusive, certainly not. I'd rather lay certain facts that will necessitate a critical look at the strings of unpalatable occurrences under the watch of Nigeria's Inspector General of Police, which speak against what he thinks he stands for, professionalism and integrity. There are other units apart from SARS in the police force. RRS had done well in the past and have been so commended by the people. Life is in binaries. Why should you lap up the commendation of one and refuse the criticisms regarding the other? A civil protest should never be seen as a personal challenge of any leader's authority. The Nigeria Police Force is not a military organization. It's a civil organization set up to look into such matters pertaining to civil engagements. And so under a democracy, peaceful protests are a way of showing displeasure and bringing the attention of the government to areas needing attention. Under a military government, it might be disallowed because of the autocratic disposition of such a government. In a democracy, it is a right. Surely, the IGP doesn't need that reminder. It is therefore sad to read that unfortunate statement from the IGP. The handling of the hashtag NSAS protest is a watershed in the history of our security architecture. And going by the reputed posture of individual policemen internationally and in peacekeeping missions outside Nigeria, the handling of the NSAS protest was dismal, disappointing, and regrettable. It did not demonstrate any form of sophistry by the police force. We watched videos of disruptors being dropped off in sleek vehicles at protest sites, especially in Abuja. According to this day newspaper, the IGP himself disclosed that 71 public warehouses and 248 privately owned stores were looted in the course of the protests in 13 states and the FCT. The death toll nationwide from the violence that erupted during the hashtag NSAS protests was revised to 73, with 22 of them policemen. Police stations were burnt, policemen and police bags were attacked, and there are reports of mass resignation of policemen. Now, the IGP should be allaying the fears of the people regarding the brutality suffered in the hands of his men. He should be sorry that under his watch, an arm of the police force became a terror to Nigerians, and he did nothing until the people cried out. He should stop digging this hole. He failed in intelligence gathering, strategic mapping, and ethical resolution of the protest. He should not make it worse by insulting the very people his men have so blatantly abused and wasted repeatedly. When we remember the IGP, this present IGP, his memory will be blighted by his management of that singular challenge of the Nigeria police force in his six-year post-independence history. As a reminder, the IGP has not updated the citizenry on the state of SWAT, which he created in October 2020. The people deserve to know. And by the way, that ridiculous video that went viral dented the image of the police force, of SWAT doing one exercise or the other. I mean, man of war and civil defense will do better. It's so laughable. Finally, it is not in the place of an IGP to allow or disallow peaceful demonstrations. The police must demonstrate their own legitimacy through their acceptance of the democratic right to protest. It's a democratic right. And in doing so, police must recognize that their duties are the protection of rights under the Nigerian constitution and upholding the Nigerian criminal code. Now, what gets to me the most, <clears throat> I see your passion, Treasure, is how 
Nigeria's leaders talk to us like we are their children. I don't understand. Disallow protests. Are you greater than Nigeria's constitution that allows peaceful protests? I will not allow. Who are you not to allow? You know, and then the, when we said we wanted to protest, right, you said, no, please, let us go and uh, see what these people have done and how we can punish them and, you know, and then the same police force is saying, no, you have to stop the panels of inquiry. I just do not understand what they Why want. Why should we stop the judicial okay. panel? I'll, 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 I'll make some comments on that stoppage because it was in almost all the newspapers today. Um, one, of our, one of the advocates even had commented on those panels before. There seems to be um, some legal issues right. that are not resolved around whether the state can sit in adjudication or in a panel against an organization that is a federal agency and on the exclusive list. Mm. So those unresolved legal issues might be something that someone who is up for mischief yeah. you know, can ride on the back of it and do a challenge. But my, my take on that would be the case is already in court, actually. Yeah. So if we can have a quick... Uh, resolution by the court because it is now the duty of the court to interpret the laws of the land and determine whether those inquiry panels are legal or not. I have a question. Yes. Does it therefore seem like those panels were set up not to find anything? They were just to make us because feel it was comfortable. To be cosmetic. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't think so uh, because if you listen to the legal sworn, apparently they are finding out a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But where, where, what we need to be able to do is to be able to take that further. Yeah. If at the end of the day people were found out to have done the wrong thing, are we going to be able to punish them? If people take the issue to court. Yes. So if people are being wronged, are we going to be able to compensate? for whatever we have, we have done against them. So th th those are issues that I think those panel... But if there are legality issues now, unresolved, there yeah. will be a problem. One quick comment again on the, uh, um, on the statement from the IG. I think some of the media might have quoted him wrong. He said specifically that he turned violent. But we all know, yes. we saw videos of people being dropped from sleek cars, and they were the ones who were then fomenting trouble. That's in Abuja. Was, that's in Lagos, in Abuja. we saw them being dropped in BRT buses. Habanunu. And there's a picture of one young man with his machete. Nobody has arrested him. We need to Honestly, find out what happened at that point. As peaceful protest is concerned, I don't think it is within its power. The court has ruled on that at the very topmost level. Yeah. Nobody let, let, let's get can, can stop uh, 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 let's a peaceful get protest. Nafi yeah. said, well, from someone that was at the Abuja protest, I protested. We were very peaceful, very, very peaceful. In fact, at the police uh, force headquarters, we were sitting down in the evening around 6.30, 6.45, when the police people came out of their office, shooting, throwing um, tear gas at us, and they literally chased us onto the highway. There, it was, we were extremely peaceful, but they decided to meet how they put the dialogue and consent with a lot of force. Mm. So, and IJO is coming out to say that he's not going to allow um, peaceful protests in the country because of, you know, it just it just makes a mockery of the system of democracy that we practice. It True. has no place at all. Nothing. There is no justification for such a statement. And this idea of wanting to put the blame of the protest turning violence on the protesters, protesters. is what so I am particularly angry at because you can't change the narrative so you can label them terrorists exactly it, 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 it becomes time. easier to say these people are terrorists oh they looted this amount of shop meanwhile in lagos what happened with the orile violence was a, allegedly a policeman from the orile uh, police barracks had killed somebody's younger brother they came back injured the policeman burned down the police station and that had nothing to do with, with the, the keja Okay. protest or the lucky protest now when the army would come out they did not go to the orile that there was violence that is it's just baffling is it it is baffling but this is how it has always been 
No, so, so, so no. What, what, what hurts me most? Democracy. What hurts me most see, is that this is this is how I will narratives on that change. Statement that we are now in democracy. The soldiers that we fought yesterday, when we said we had a military regime, are the same people who are wearing Agbada today, mm. and we say we have a civilian government. True. You know. So well, whether it is 1971 killing of uh, Kunle Adekweju in UI is unresolved. Mm. The, whoever did the shot was never punished. Mm. Or it is the uh, Ali must go in the 1978. Oh, or is it, those things are What are we there. even talking about? The Minister of Justice was killed and was murdered in this country until today. Number it's not four. resolved. Mm. But what uh, I believe is that we cannot leave leprosy. And be treating ring That is my own. We agree with you. <laughs> well, we appreciate you sharing your opinions and comments with us. Phantom 2K10 makes a comment on our last advocacy. He says, extremely grateful, appreciative of this great platform and those behind it. Also, Uchenna Eric says, God help us on this. The government have been so bought off that... The regulators can't do anything. We sincerely appreciate you all sharing your opinions with us. And thank you, Phantom2K10 and Uche Eric, for your contributions. Do continue to participate with us on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, you can go to plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, our very own Bolaon says, performance management is the way to govern. We'll find out in a bit. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.